Hello, my friends. Today is a good day. We are going to be talking about a gentleman that brought you some of the most beautiful car body designs in the world. Car bodies that look like they are in motion while standing still. The guy that put the ooh in pontoon fenders. If you haven't already guessed it, we are going to be talking about Giuseppe, aka Joseph Fogoni, and the lasting impact that he left on the automotive industry. So, let's do it. Maybe you are unfamiliar with this channel. If that's the case, welcome. What I do is uh, automotive history. That is my hobby. If you like that kind of thing, press like, press subscribe, and if you don't, that's fine too. Now let's go all the way back in time to 1908 when Fogoni began apprenticing at a carriage shop in Paris at the young age of 14. That wasn't that young to start doing that back then, but it is kind of young for it now. And Fogoni excelled. He had an aptitude for coach building while he was in Paris. However, he would be forced to stop when World War I erupted. And finally, when World War I ended, the war to end all wars, or we would never have another one again. When it ended, Fogoni picked back up his trade in one of the suburbs of Paris that I can't pronounce, I'll write it down below. He picked back up his trade and quickly earned a reputation for style and quality. Now, at this point, it might be pertinent to explain exactly what coach building is for those who might not be familiar. A coach builder or body maker is a manufacturer that produces bodies for carriages or vehicles. The origins of coach building started with horse-drawn carriages and Naturally, when automotives came out, folks still wanted to use coach builders and customize their new horseless carriage. A vehicle body constructed by a coach builder is often called a coach built body. And before the 1960s, before the popularization of the unibody construction, well, there were a ton of coach builders. There were a ton of independent coach builders building bodies for manufacturers' chassis. Now, back to Fagoni. By 1925, he was completing bespoke grand touring bodies for the chassis like Delahaye, Delage, Alfa Romeo, Bugatti, and Renault. His work was quickly noticed by race car drivers at the time. He designed aerodynamic bodies for race cars of the day like the Alfa Romeo 8C2300 Le Mans, which won the 1932, 1933, and 1934 24 Hours of Le Mans. And I feel like I have seen this car in a museum because, you know, I'm kind of like a museum nut. I feel like I saw, may have seen this car, exact car, at the Simeon Foundation, which is in Philly, or I may have seen this at the Lauman. I know, ah, I know where I saw it. There's a, I think it's just the... Oh, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a museum in Turin. Also, I went to the Alpha Museum, too, so I know I saw it somewhere. I can't remember what. Anyways, we continue on. Pardon the digression. Delage owners were lining up at Fagoni's doors. He had a series of D8 designs that set trends in the automotive industry. And now, while his designs were garnering attention, these are not the designs that he is most popular for. These are not the designs that he would come to make at Fagoni and Falashi. And it would be in 1935 that Fagoni would join up with Italian businessman Ovidio Falashi to form the legendary and iconic Fagoni and Falashi. And his work would be glorious. The Delahaye Type 135, the Delahaye Type 165, the Talbot Lago T150 CS teardrop coupe commissioned by, by Antonio Lago himself while he was re resurrecting the Talbot Lago brand. Hot dog. Those are some good looking cars. Now, needless to say, if you were purchasing a coach body by Fagoni and Falashi, you probably had some money. This was fancy clientele. Dukes, duchesses, oil magnets, you name it. These were works of art, expressions of Fagoni, steel in motion, but also they were status symbols. You had to be rich 
and well-connected if you wanted a body from Fagoni and Falashi. In 1936, at the Paris Auto Salon, Fagoni featured a streamlined Delahaye Roadster with fully enclosed fenders and on a short competition chassis. By today's standards, he broke the internet with that car at the Paris Auto Salon. And why stop there if you're Fagoni? In 1937, at the New York Auto Show, they showcased the Teardrop Talbot Lago T150 CSS. And it was a sensation. Aircraft, dynamics, and design were a heavy influence on Fagoni. This influence helped develop his very distinctive Italian design of teardrop elliptical silhouettes and teardropped pontoon-like fender, which really gave these cars this fluid-like grace, this motion while standing still. Function and aerodynamics in mind, Fagoni added fender skirts to not just the back, but also the front fenders. Windshields were steep and leaned back. Many door handles and headlights were flush to the body. Also, Fagoni went to great lengths to not have his roadsters and drop head coupes cluttered with folded tops. So much so that he actually designed and got patents for sunroofs and hideaway tops. His designs are so streamlined that they often look windswept. And the chrome hood ornaments and moldings often just further accentuate the look that these cars are never standing still. Fagoni was extra in so much of his design. Well, why wouldn't he be so in regards to the paint? He used nitrocellulose lacquers to apply his metallic and brilliant paint colors. And often he would use two, maybe three paint colors to further accentuate his body's design. And in the interior, there were rich dashboards made of golden woods, which is considered a signature of Fagoni and Falashi. And then we would have the beginning and trials of World War II, which would really leave much of the populace and less of a place to be able to afford such opulence. However, Fagoni and Fagoni and Falashi's designs live on and are showcased quite often at some of the most prestigious car shows in the world. Just this past Pebble Beach, which was like a week or two ago, the 1937 Talbot Lago T150 CSS Coupe, Teardrop Coupe, one in its class. That was shown by Lee Anderson Sr. And also the 1939 Delahaye 165 Fagoni and Falashi took first in its class as well at Pebble. Shown by Peter Mullen of the Mullen Automotive Foundation. There is no doubt that Fagoni made some of the most beautiful car bodies ever, ever, ever. What do you think? What is your favorite of all of these? What if you had one? Would you drive it? I'd be slightly terrified, but I want to. What should I cover next? Who else is one of your favorite coach builders and designers? All right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed this, you like it, press subscribe, press like, and if you didn't, that's fine too. I'll see you next week with another very cool automotive history topic. Bye.